Good day, traders. One minute mindset reset. Uh, beautiful, sunny, hot day here in southern Canada. Just had a great run. Today, we're talking about three session setups. Now, we had uh, PPI on the calendar today. We had CPI yesterday. It's Thursday. We had some absolute monster moves today. We had uh, second hour trades yesterday. We had uh, no news Monday, no news Tuesday for textbook opportunities. Uh, DJ30, for example, there were other trades that traders took. We had three session setups. Now, some excellent questions about three session setups. Do I need three day? Do I need to understand three day setups to trade three session setups? No, you don't. But if you understand that day threes can offer parabolic moves, the three session setup uh, may be a parabolic, a large five star parabolic opportunity. But more importantly, the consolidations are critical. Uh, another excellent question was, uh, does it have to be the U.S. session? No, the, the, the peak formations can form in two sessions. It can form in uh, U.S. and Asia for a consolidation heading into London. It can be a U.S. session peak formation high-low. The consolidation is inside of those Asia and London for a move in London or uh, Asia, London for a move in New York. The consolidation, the peak formations from one session or two are where you can define your consolidation. That's what allows you to have a thesis for either a sell high, a buy low, or nothing at all. You can get a breakout pullback. We saw a breakout pullback on the Swiss franc. We saw a cup and handle on the Canadian dollar. Uh, a, a large geometrical classical charting pattern, three session setup for a parabolic move after PPI. Understanding that once I've taken that trade, or if I take two trades, once I'm in that move and I lock in that money and I, I'm shutting it down because after that, after that, I have no idea what could happen. It can go either direction. It can go back and forth. It can continue to auction and, and continue the original move. I don't know, but I know that when I'm in that first move and it, and it completes my exit, hits my take profit, whatever it is, I'm done. I'm done because then I'm done. That's it. I walk away. I don't have to sit around and, and you know, the longer you're at the screen, the more likely you can do damage or engage in impulsive irrational activity, especially when we get this kind of volatility or these opportunities. Traders become mesmerized into continuing to try and trade and get more and get la you know, take more trades. And that's what can ultimately end up doing damage. So lock it in, get off the screen, which again uh, reinforces the point. If you have first hour news, automatically thinking end of hour, uh, beginning of second hour, New York open as a possible trade entry. The trade entry can come at the beginning of the second hour instead of the New York open, or as we saw in gold, a second opportunity to re-enter. But it's about understanding the consolidation. If you're inside of peak formations, that's where the consolidation build. We saw an unbelievable pump and dump on DJ30, uh, West Texas on cr spot crude, uh, we had low-hanging fruit on the euro after a three-session parabolic in the London session, right at the Europe Open. Again, understanding when you're in that 100-pit box, that upper level, if it's consolidating for a sell-high setup, 75 and above. Anything that I look at, automatically, I'm looking for stuff that's up around 75. Today's gold trade is the exact same trades we went over in videos from the last couple months, first-hour news. Three pushes into the peak formation, second hour entry, New York continuation or a New York blow off. But it's day four. We had a huge move on gold, massive. Uh, so the, if you understand the importance of those rectangles, those peak formations, the consolidations, that's what gives me a thesis for a range expansion or even a high, low, low, high opportunity. So it's critical to recognize where those consolidations lie. People are all caught up into just selling highs and buying lows, but those peak formations are key because that's what gives us a thesis as to where the consolidations are occurring heading into the session that we're trading and whether or not there is an, indeed an actual high quality setup. Which brings me to my next point real quickly is that traders are following all these instruments. I follow the, the major pairs, uh, yen, euro, pound, CAD Swiss, uh, that's pretty much it. Gold, uh, DJ30 mainly now. I, I tend to find that that seems to set up cleaner. NASDAQ number two, S&P. Uh, I look for major signals, first red day, first green day. 
But if I get that on on DJ30 or NASDAQ, I will probably trade those just because the volatility tends to be a bit more aggressive on the S&P. Uh, but the pattern's complete. So you don't need to have 30 different instruments. You don't need to be you know trading all these cross rate pairs. Occasionally when you see the euro or the pound on a day three or an inside day, those are days then when I will check the other cross rates because when we get a narrow range day on one of the majors, one of the cross rates could be set up in the session that I'm about to trade for a best trade setup, especially if it's a day three. So uh, keep it simple, traders. Uh, this is unbelievable this week. I, I just can, cannot get over how big the moves have been and how clean they have been. And we've had textbook opportunities every single day. Be patient. Stay back. Look at these charts today. Study the charts from this week. We have had some very textbook, well-engineered charts, and they're going to continue. Keep it simple. Stay disciplined. Focused on the simplest, best trading setups in the session that you're trading. Keep it simple. Keep it going and keep it growing. Have a great day, and may the markets go with you.